My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. I'm going to get right into it because we have a lot to cover. I'm going to have to give you a spoiler alert before we get into anything because Micah Miller's family and JP Miller have reached a plea deal. This is outraged, people. Are you kidding me? When I found this out, I was so frustrated. Is this it? I feel like there's so much to the story that has still yet to be uncovered. So it's really boggling my mind that Micah's family agreed to this. The details of the settlement are frustratingly confidential. So there's no wrongful death suit. There's just, that's it. JP had filed a motion to remove Sierra as Micah's representative. So what comes of the charity work that Micah was working on in Africa, building the school? Does that just, I suppose that's part of the agreement that they reached in this plea deal. And I was wondering if JP had posted any more of his sermons recently to his website. The website is down. The last time I looked at the website was when I was doing my research on the guest speaker he had, Jesse Duplantis. I knew they also had a YouTube channel though, so I went over and I'm pretty sure it used to be called at least Solid Rock Church or Solid Rock Ministry. It's called Music and Word and it looks like the last time they posted anything that was of a sermon was about three months ago. So I'll be keeping my eyes out especially since this agreement has been reached. We were watching an interview with JP Miller and News Nation. We didn't watch the entire thing so I do have a little bit of that we're going to get into later in the video. I do want to touch briefly on the theory of the magnolia tree in the interview he was talking about about. The interviewer Rich McHugh asked JP Miller about the ants video, the infamous ants video. JP Miller justifies at the time that he was on painkillers due to falling out of a magnolia tree. I had remembered that his ex-wife Allison had filed a police report due to JP allegedly stalking and harassing her. And in this report, JP had moved across the way from her and the only thing blocking his view from her was a magnolia tree. So I wondered if these two stories were the same story, but JP was just kind of sugarcoating the whole reason that he was in a tree in the first place. I believe he said he was 16. I'd have to rewatch it. But I also saw in the comments that we started poking theories wondering if these were actually the same two instances. Again, no proof of that, but I saw theories in the comments kind of reiterating what I thought. Micah hadn't been with a man since meeting her first husband. Being with a man, I mean, what does that entail? Was that Micah's first kiss? I feel like Micah struggled a lot with the idea of being a good Christian. I mentioned allegations that I thought Micah might have been groomed. I had seen screenshots and Reddit posts of maybe Micah joining the church early as the age of 10, but I also saw some articles saying 13. I cannot confirm when she actually joined the church, but it was most likely at a young age. I tried finding what position her first husband was in. One post I saw, I believe he was like a music director. Another post I saw him being a youth pastor. Like, <laughs> Micah's first husband was a member of the church, but he was also J.P. Miller's best friend at the time. There's no such thing as a perfect victim, so I don't want to sit here and pretend that Micah didn't do anything wrong. Also, at the same time, I don't want to disrespect her as well. You know, it didn't look good for really anyone involved, J.P. or Micah. Micah was married to her first husband, which... I forget his name, I do apologize for that. Jeremy Days, D-E-A-S is his last name. So Micah babysat for Allison and J.P. Miller. I'd, I don't know the details, I don't think we need to know the details, but Micah and J.P. got together and an affair began. Allison filed divorce for J.P., Jeremy filed divorce from Micah, Micah and J.P. got together. So this relationship was already built on a failed and adulterous marriages. To, to, I mean, Jesus surrounded himself by sinners. I am nobody to judge, which is such a scandal in church. And then for them to still get up on, on stage and preach about um, following God's word, it's just a little, uh, I'm going to keep my opinions at a minimum because we have a lot to get through. I found a video with a body language expert who watched J.P. Miller's interview and reacted to it. So let's take a look at that. Pastor John Paul Miller broke down in tears even before the questions began. And I have a little moment of that I want to play for you and ask you about it right after this. So take a look. What's tripping you up? Just being able to tell them. Just being able to talk about everything. 
Okay, um, Scott Russ, what's your take? All right. Well, this is sort of this is sort of the pre-show uh, to to because it was for the interview to set the mood, so you can see, so the interviewer can see he's in a he's crying and he's upset. And he's all those kind of things, right? Now, this may seem odd to um, when you see this, say, why would he do something like that? However, having watched these this a couple of these interviews on him, I'm under the impression he has a histrionic personality disorder, and what that would mean is you use. Um, your uh, emotions to get attention, you know? So that's what he's doing. It's the perfect example of that. It would seem odd outside of that. But if you talk to uh, a, a psych person, they will tell you, oh yeah, that's histrionic personality uh, disorder there. Because he's setting the mood to say, look, I'm sad. I'm really crying a lot. So let's move on from here as I'm sad. So it's sort of a mood. It's, it's the pre-show sad setup and something like that. It's really common. There's that crazy video of Pastor Miller rolling around in the grass, uh, squealing like a girl that goes on and on mm -hmm. for, you know, 10 minutes. And it's really odd. And of course, we wanted to ask him about it. He was claiming that he was covered in ants. He wasn't. Um, and his answer, well, let, I'll, I'll, I'll play it and then I'll ask you about it. Take a look at this. Well, there's okay. the video. And then it was odd. It was such an odd video. He was just stuck there at the open door of his car and he never moved the whole time. The, the neighbor, you know, let's listen into this mm -hmm. and then um, I'm going to ask you about it. Okay. Um, I fell out of a tree, a giant magnolia tree. It was like 300 years old. I broke 12 bones. It was 10, 10 to 12 bones. I don't know if you count fingers. Yeah, it doesn't count fingers. Anyway, I have all this metal in my body and um, I'd never taken pain meds in my life. And I just had my body cast taken off. Um, and so I took a little bit too much pain meds that day. Unfortunately, that's a different sound bite. He, he actually made some answers and was went into a serious, you know, detail about a magnolia tree and how many fingers and toes, you know, and it, it was, um, yep. it was very, very detailed when you just want the answer. And I kept wondering, get on with it. Again, Spidey Sense saying, you're avoiding us. You're, you're, you're trying to take us on a trip somewhere. Yeah, th well, that's exactly what he's doing. This is manipulation. It's a form of manipulation. There are different, there are different styles and types when you start man manipulating someone. Now, what he's doing here is he's setting up again, like he did earlier, saying, oh, you know, setting the mood. He's setting the mood for his answer because his answer is not going to be the, a good answer. So what he says is, uh, you know, oh, I, I broke a bunch of bones and I'd see what I break. I break two or three, like he's relaxed and not worried about it. Not like there's something big coming because that the answer he's supposed to be given is, is an important answer. So at this point, when he's, he's setting up that, how, how it wasn't that big a deal, and he starts talking about this 300-year-old tree and how wonderful that was, that's all just to make things stay calm. So again, he's manipulating the mood there. So you'll see when you hear the answer, which is going to be a big deal, it doesn't seem like that big a deal. You know, it's, it's because he's relaxed. He's not worried about giving that answer at all. So it, it's subtle, mm. but that's what's going on there. It's very subtle, but that's what's happening. Histrionic personality disorder causes and symptoms. HPD is a mental health condition marked by intense, unstable emotions and a distorted self-image. The word histrionic means dramatic or theatrical. For people with histrionic personality disorder, their self-esteem depends on approval of others and doesn't come from a true feeling of self-worth. They have an overwhelming desire to be noticed and often behave dramatically or inappropriately to get attention. People with HPD often don't realize their behavior in a way of thinking they may be problematic. HPD is one of a group of conditions called Cluster B personality disorders, which involve dramatic and erratic behavior. So that's what they're talking about. I'm going to have to take a brief second because they're coming back with construction vehicles. Vehicles. This is actually a great commercial to get my stuff charged, but when we come back, we're going to be taking a look again at the interview from JP. And even though they reached a plea agreement, I am still not satisfied. So there's lots of questions that we haven't even taken a look at, so we'll react to that when we get back.